Let's talk about another super typical problem that most people working with ggplot2 run into. So the problem is dotting bar charts and we will be working with this cheat sheet here. You can find the link below this video or also in the repository and also we will be working in the 0.1 dotting bar charts file. Let me just create a bar chart for you. I've created a data set here for you and this bar chart depicts the amount of CO2 emissions on each continent in the year 1990 and 2012. Well, this bar chart is stacked, meaning the bars are stacked on top of each other, but I would actually like them to be side by side. So first let's talk about the problem here. If I copy that code here, uh, I just wonder why are the bars stacked on top of each other? And if I have a look at the documentation of Jim Call, I just uh, type a question mark and then the geometric object and hit enter, I can see that there's an argument which is called position. And this argument is by default has the value stack. So if I just type that in here into my plot, position equals stack, I find that that's the exact same plot I just created. So by default, bar plots are always stacked and not all the time do you want them to be stacked. Quite often you want them to be side by side and have some control of how that looks like in your plot. So um, how do we solve that problem? So the first thing we can do is there's another value for the position argument, which is called dodge. And if I'm using that, uh, I can see, well, obviously that solved my problem. So now the bars are next to each other. They're not on top of each other anymore. And I can clearly see the differences between the year 1990 and 2012. That's all nice and neat, but it doesn't give you a lot of flexibility. For example, you can't add space between adjacent bars, just not possible. You, you might uh, be able to change the width of the bars, but that's about it. So we need another solution. And I want to introduce you to the position dodge function, which gives you lo a lot more flexibility in how you can dodge bars side by side. So let's copy the code again. And instead of using dodge as a string here, we just paste in the position dodge function. If I hit enter again, I can see that nothing changes, it's the same plot. Um, but now we can look deeper into what's really happening. And the first thing you need to know is that each bar chart has a specific width. So if I type question mark gm call and look into the geometric object, I see that there's an argument called width, which you have seen already. And here it says in the documentation, the it's called it's the bar width and the bar width is by default set to 90% of the resolution of the data. So what that, does that mean? Um, this means that each bar here, so the red bar, the green bar, has a width of 0.9. Okay. And if I jump to the cheat sheet here, I, I can see that the width here is 0.9 and here it says the width of each bar is the total width divide, divided by the number of bars. So in our case we have for each pair we have two bars and I assigned a width of 0.9 so the width of each bar is 0.45. If I had three bars and a value of 9 of course then the width of each bar would be 0.3. If I would set the width to 1 what would happen it would take all the space and all the bars would be next to each other. This is nothing you would do but it just shows you the maximum value of bar or the width of a bar should take. It can also be bigger but then they overlap heavily. That doesn't make much sense. So let's go back to point 0.9 and um, let's keep in mind that the width of each bar is now the total width divided by the number of bars and in our case this would be 0.45. So the next thing I see here is that I can also add a width to the position dodge function. And let me just do that quickly. I run this code and again you see nothing changes. That is because if the width of the position dodge function is the same as the width of GM call, then the bars will always be close to each other. There will not be any gap between the two or three or four bars. So that's the first thing you have to keep in mind. And if I look into the cheat sheet again, it says the width assigned to each bar is the width specified in position dodge divided by the number of bars. And again, that would be 
So whenever you want to create adjacent bars without any space between them, you have to make sure that in position dodge, the width argument is the same as the width argument of GM call. Now that we know how to create adjacent bars with position dodge, we can do something we were not able to when we used the position stack method. So let me just copy that code and let's make the bars a little bit smaller and use the same value because we want to have adjacent bars. And if I do that, I see that, well, the bars are much smaller now. So how small? Well, we know that. So it would be 0.6 divided by the number of bars. We have two bars for each pair. So now the width of the bars would be 0.3. And the advantage of this method is that it's more easy to see which bars bar belongs to which continent. If instead I would, again, I use a value of one, it would, it's super hard to read. It's almost impossible to read. Um, so a value of 0.6 it's, is much nicer because you clearly see which bar belongs to which continent. And maybe you want to go for 0.7. It's still readable and certainly nicer than the default because with 0.9 they're sort of a little bit too close to each other for my taste. So that's a nice technique. Um, and in the next step, let's figure out how we can add space between bars. Let's have a look at the right panel here. And the rule is the following. Whenever you want to add space between bars, the width of the position dodge function must be greater than the width of GM call. So here in this example, the width is one here of position dodge and the total width of the bars is 0.9 and one is obviously greater than 0.9. If we do that here in our code, I just copy that code here and make the width of the position dodge function larger or greater, then you see there's indeed a little gap here in between. And conceptually what's happening is the following. So the bars have a width and with position dodge you do not only uh, specify the width of the bars but also an extra space that you allocate to each bar and that's this gap here in between. We can also calculate this space if you want to. So for example here it says well the width and the assigned width is well the, the width here 0.8 divided by the number of bars. That would be two in our case. So the width would be 0.4 and the width of each bar would be 0.7 divided by two, right? So the width of each bar is smaller than the assigned width for each bar. And that is why we have a gap between them. We can also make the gap really tiny by using 0.75. And now we can see a really, really small gap here in between. We can also make it bigger by using a value like 0.9, but then they're probably too far apart. So 0.8 will, will do to create a really nice space between the bars. So that's so much about adjacent bars and space between bars. And in the next video, let's see how we can create overlapping bars and also add space between bars with the position dodge to function.